In this video, I'll be making a custom sized foam mannequin head that can be used for wig styling or as a base for designing fitted helmet patterns. First, I need to create a pattern of my head. So I'm using the plastic wrap and tape method, wrapping my whole head and neck with openings to see and breathe. Next, I need to sketch in the center line and then very carefully cut along the line far enough to be able to remove the mold. I managed not to cut myself, but I'd recommend not doing it this way. Instead, be safe and get someone to help you cut it off from the back. I temporarily stuffed the head with some grocery bags just to hold the shape so I could tape the seams back together Fill in the nose and eyes, then sketch in more lines to create shapes that looked like they would lie more or less flat once they were cut apart. It's important to add registration marks anywhere there's a curve to help line everything up later on, and also add in some way of identifying the orientation of pieces in relation to each other. My system was just to mark edges that go together with the same letter. I cut out all the pieces and traced them onto foam floor mats, which was a good opportunity to use up some of the awkwardly shaped scraps left over from cutting out those risers for Perrin's axe from the last project. It's important to extend those registration marks into the piece so they don't disappear when they're cut out, and also copy in the orientation lettering so those puzzle pieces get put back together in the right place. You always need a really sharp knife to get clean cuts in foam. So I have my sharpener ready to go every couple of cuts, which is a super easy and economical option when you're working with foam. I laid out all the foam pieces and the pattern for comparison to figure out which pieces would benefit from some pre-shaping. So with the heat gun, I'm stretching and forming some of the pieces to fit together more easily for the rounded head shape. Contact cement is excellent for adhering foam because when you spread it on both sides, let it dry, then begin sticking it together. You can kind of work and stretch the foam as you go to get those registration marks to line up and create a smoothly rounded shape from pieces that are mostly flat. The contact cement also sands nicely and doesn't add bulk to the seam, so you can get some really clean joints that way. With all the pieces assembled, I could see that the head was a tad crooked, probably because I did the tape and plastic pattern on myself and unwittingly pulled everything tighter in areas that I could reach better, but no big deal. I can stretch and form it a bit with some heat, and I'm also adding in a little more shape to the facial features. The seams and that kind of funky nose can be further refined with the Dremel and some hand sanding, and then a once over with the heat gun gives the foam a final smoothing. I had a few gaps, especially around that nose piece, so I'm filling that with caulk and misting on some water so the patched areas can be smoothed and blended in. I had some leftover white Plasti Dip, which was just enough for a base coat. Then I misted on the last drags of a can of black Plasti Dip to further disguise the seams and also to make a grippy texture for holding wigs and patterns in place. The foam head by itself is fairly robust, but stuffing it with paper just adds some extra rigidity for when you need to stick pins into the mannequin. I also want this to be able to attach to my body cast torso mannequin. So I'm including a PVC fitting into the reinforced foam neck closure so this can screw into the neck on the body cast for styling longer wigs or patterning something like a cowl where you need the head and shoulders all together. But I made sure to recess the fitting so the head can also stand by itself flat on a table. The finished head isn't exactly beautiful, but it functions well. That rubbery Plasti Dip and the spatter texture make it super grippy, so you might not even need to use pins. But if you do, the pins work really well with the floor mat foam, so that's going to keep projects in place on the mannequin. Making stuff on a mannequin is a lot easier than trying to model it on yourself, so this is an easy and inexpensive way to make a model for any part of your body. Just double check that the sizes and shapes end up being accurate for your body before making any closely fitting patterns from the mannequin because it's really easy for things to get a bit off during the cutting and shaping. This was a weird experience plastic wrapping my face, but it got the job done, and I hope this provides some inspiration for making useful parts out of foam. I'm still working on the vacuum formed axe, and thanks for all your advice on that. I should have some updated results ready in the next couple of weeks. So hit the like button if you had fun today. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you soon.